this little video we're just going to do uh, the main differences between an ML7 and a Super 7. Uh, there's some obvious little differences that we've not spoke about uh, like the motor mount uh, that was done slightly differently uh, and there were some, some differences that are actually you can get the same on both uh, like the long bed version things like that but in this one we're going to just look at the main differences um, there are some little small ones that you might want to ask questions about uh, please put them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them and if also if there's also anything that you think we've missed you can put them in the comments as well and we can maybe do a follow up video on any obvious ones that we have missed out on so let's get on with that now and uh, let's see the differences okay where do we start well let's start with the, the difference in speeds as you can see on this picture uh, the Super 7 uh, has two pulleys from the motor uh, the, which will give you a range of 210 revs a minute to about 2100 revs a minute that's excluding using the back gear uh, as in on the ML7 as you can see it just has a single speed uh, and that'll, uh, that'll give you a range of 200 to 650 uh, I know some people do make a, a new pulley for the motor to give them a, a, bit, a little bit faster speed but please don't exceed uh, the 600 uh, the about a thousand sorry revs a minute on that uh, the head bearings uh, won't take it you can see the speeds there uh, on the super 7 uh, it gives them on, on the actual pulley cover on earlier ones it was actually on the side near the motor uh, while we're talking at this this end of the, the lathe um, it's the clutch that has the super 7 uh, it comes a standard all, all super 7s come with a, a clutch mechanism you can see there um, it was a sort of a, an after retrofit if you will it was an option from the from the factory um, this photograph shows um, the main parts of the, the the ml7 clutch which was like i say you can get it as a retrofit which goes onto the lathe um, but talking about the speeds you've also got the back gear on the lathes um, this is the the little lever that uh, disengages or engages the, the back gear if you will the bull wheel uh, from your spindle a simple little cam and a little lever that pulls over dead easy to operate whereas on this one you can just see on the uh, ml7 you have to, have to actually use an allen key which the, the only way to it was use a sawn off allen key uh, which does the same job but just a bit more filler a bit more time consuming uh, both these are engaged in, in both the same way so this next picture shows uh, the right hand lever as you can see on this picture is what engages the back gear um, just lift the lever up and just disengage put it down and exactly the same lever here on the ML7 um, just that's the, the same lever doing the exact same job just different knobs on um, and, the, and the, the levers on the left on both pictures uh, to, to do the forward and reverse direction on the on the lead screw now when you want to uh, want to change the, the, the chuck set on the on the lathes on the Super 7, this little lever here, centre of picture, it's a, a spindle lock. Uh, quite simply, just push it, engage it into the into the uh, the pulley on the on the spindle. It just locks it, so you can then change your your chuck no problem. And you can see on this one on the ML7, there's nothing on there. Now a lot of people talking about the back gear use the back gear, um, they engage it in to to lock everything up, so they can remove the the chuck. Please don't do this i'm advising do not do this um i've seen so many gears with the teeth smashed off where people have tried to get a stuck chuck off and they've actually smashed the, the gear this picture here i've shown i've seen a few people do this quite successfully with stuck chucks etc is a piece of wood um which locks against the the gear on the ml7 uh, against the headstock casting uh, this works quite effectively. I've seen it. I say I've seen it done a few times. It, it, nice piece of softwood and digs into the teeth and holds them for you, so you're not actually damaging any any gears. If anything's going to go, the wood will, will split first. Uh, a couple of differences on the ML7 and the Super 7 I'm showing you is the gearbox, so that makes it a Super 7B. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is also available on the ML7, so even though it is a difference, it was a, an optional extra. Also was this the lead screw hand wheel, which can be seen here. Uh, again, this was available as a, as an as a optional fitting on the on the ML7 as well. Uh, the next main difference, as you can see on the this photograph, is a long uh, cross slide. Um, this allows you to mount things that can be seen here, like your real tool post, things like that, and also give a, a lot better travel. Um, on the on the cross side compared to the standard on this one, uh, you can see it's got the uh, the, the previous proportion of the extra slot on it, um, just a bigger bed. 
uh, also with the, the hand wheels on the cross slide as you can see not only does it look a bit longer on the the, the super 7 but it has a, uh, a hand wheel the the dial which can actually be zeroed so when you turn in anything you want to take it down say five though you can zero it and then take it down the five though which compared to the, the standard ml7 it's just a, a box and the read out uh, in, in either those or if it was a metric version obviously in, in millimeters um, the, the clamping of the, the top slide onto the cross slide done slightly differently uh, on both of them now the advantage with the Super 7 was you've got a 360 degree uh, turn on your on your top slide you can put it to any any angle you wanted to um, it worked with these two little square locking uh, bolts at the side uh, whereas on the, the ML7 it was using the T slots uh, both top slides are removable so when you are clamping things onto the, the cross slide for boring etc or if you're putting a, your vertical milling slide on there so you could do that on both but the diff disadvantage on the ml so you can see you only have 45 degrees out of the way from zero so basically 90 degree movement and, and that was your, your lot uh, the next big difference was the, the is the tail stock as you can see on this picture it's a lot larger tail stock uh, both two marsh taper and they both give about two and a half uh, inches if you're in the imperial machine two and a half inches of travel you can get a little bit more on the, the super 7 but obviously it's not advised but the main difference is besides um, having the extra uh, grip onto the bag it's bigger it also had a self eject so when you wind the, the handle back it would eject your, your chucks air or your, your, your drill your two more safer drill bits whereas on the standard um, ML7 as you can see here it wasn't a self eject uh, so you used to put up you know what you do to remove the I think I might have shown on an early video is you just put a piece of bar up the inside and just tap it out uh, going back to the head stock just, just quickly um, is the lubrication uh, as you can be seen on the, the ML7 picture first is uh, just two drip boilers um, which which dripped into white metal burrings and this is one reason why you shouldn't go above a thousand revs a minute because the white metal burrings won't take that sort of speed <coughs> excuse me again and if you look here onto the, the super 7 it actually had a, a tapered um, burring which was a, a tapered roller burring which was like a thrust burring so you could do a lot bigger work a lot deeper cuts uh, and this is fed with a little uh, wick uh, oil oiler if you see on the side going on to the saddle now um, basically both the same uh, there weren't a lot of differences in these um, both work exactly the same way the only difference is on this one you can see is it's also got the power cross feed the little black button near the top there um, this is just a as well as you you, you, you travel on your, your bed you also got your cross feed which is you can be used under power and you just engage that by pushing in or, or, or pulling out the, the button and as you can be seen on the, the standard ML7 there's no power cross feed option on that um, and it was just a the bog standard bed the bog standard carry sorry there we go job done now we hope we've covered the main points there like I said earlier if there's anything that you, you think we've missed please bottom down below and we'll uh, do our best to answer them and um, what we'll do is say if anybody's interested in any little features on, on the machines we'll do a special video on them so maybe on the power cross feed things like that again just put them in the comments below and we'll, we'll do our best to do a little video on those so thanks again for watching please like and subscribe to the channel until next time it'll be great